You see, in the first century AD, and in the roughly 50 years either side of it, so making roughly a 200-year span with Jesus in the middle, we know of 10 or a dozen other Jewish messianic or quasi-messianic movements. We know because of the historian Josephus, who was a contemporary, um, uh, a little after the time of Jesus, but contemporary with many of those movements. We know what they did. We know that people talked about the kingdom of God. We know that they went about promising their followers signs of salvation and deliverance. And we know that in pretty well every other case of which we have evidence, those movements came to an end with the violent death of the founder or the key figure. And if, when that happened, you wanted to continue the movement, then you had a choice, quite clear in first century Judaism. If your would-be Messiah gets executed by the authorities or otherwise done away with, you have a choice. Either give up the movement, go and leave a quiet, live a quiet life somewhere, or find yourself a new Messiah. Fascinatingly, for an ancient historian, the Jewish groups that had followed Jesus of Nazareth didn't do either of those things. They continued the movement and they said, astonishingly, that the recently crucified Jesus was the Messiah and therefore, by the way, was the Lord of the world. That's a whole other business. Why did this one group suddenly mutate into this fascinating new movement that was taking forward the kingdom of God project as they had understood Jesus to be living it and doing it and saying that it was actually going ahead with him still in charge. The answer that they all give was that he'd been raised from the dead. He'd been resurrected. Now let's be quite clear what the word resurrection meant in the first century. The Greek word anastasis, resurrection, and other words like it, and whether it's in Aramaic or Latin or whatever, were never a fancy way of saying life after death. They were always a way of saying life after life after death. Now, that seems to be very clear, but I've discovered with experience that not everyone gets it first time. Actually, I thought of calling the book, Surprised by Hope, Life After Life After Death. And after trying it out on various friends, I got so many puzzled looks and people sending emails back assuming this was a misprint, you know, that I'd just put in one too many life afters in there somewhere. Um, <coughs> that it, it clearly does need some explaining. If you believe in resurrection, you believe that when the person dies, they are dead for a period, whether it's a few days or a few thousand years or whatever, and then at some future date, that person will be raised to a new bodily life. Resurrection was never a way of saying, in other words, John Brown's body lies a mouldering in the grave while his soul goes marching on. They had ways of saying that, and resurrection was not one of those ways. You can check this out. I've written it up. Other people have written it up. It shouldn't actually be controversial. Uh, Geza Vermesh. Uh, leading agnostic Jewish scholar in Oxford has recently published a book on the resurrection with a very unsatisfying conclusion, but he makes it quite clear at the beginning that in first century Judaism, that is what resurrection meant, a newly embodied life after a period of being dead. And now let's get something else clear historically. People have sometimes said, I've actually been involved in public debates where people have said this, that it is only we now, with 200 years of modern scientific historiography, who know that dead people don't rise. And indeed, when the Jesus Seminar was debating 10 years ago the resurrection of Jesus, when they went public with their findings, according to which Jesus didn't rise from the dead, they actually took to the press conference a young woman who worked at the local morgue so that she could bear witness, in case anyone was in any doubt, that normally when people died, they sort of stayed dead. Now, um, I find this totally extraordinary. Homer knew that dead people stay dead. Aeschylus says that dead people stay dead. Pliny says that there is no such thing as... You know, this is common knowledge. And what's more, it was common knowledge to first century Jews and to first century Christians. 
In other words, they didn't think that this was just an odd miracle which might occur from time to time and it just sort of happened to Jesus. They knew perfectly well that in the ordinary course of events this didn't happen. Didn't take 17th or 18th or 19th century science to tell us this obvious fact. Rather, the Jews of the time, some of them, not all of them, the Pharisees who were among the leading uh, theoreticians, as it were, the early rabbis in Judaism, they believed in resurrection because they believed in a good creator God who was going to sort the world out once and for all, eventually. If you believe in a good creation and in a God who's going to put the world right finally, then one of the likely places you'll end up is saying he will have to raise people from the dead. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.